Hello, and welcome to my second video in my AP Human Geography Unit 1 test review. Let's just get moving right along from where we ended in the last video. The second type of diffusion is expansion diffusion. Expansion diffusion is the spread of a feature from one place to another through a snowballing process. There are actually three types of expansion diffusion, that is hierarchical diffusion, contagious diffusion, and stimulus diffusion. Hierarchical diffusion is the spread of an idea from person or nose of authority to other people. This is if there's a fashion trend from a celebrity and then that passes down through common people. That is hierarchical diffusion. Contagious diffusion is the rapid widespread diffusion of a characteristic throughout the population. And this, an example of this can be a disease. And then there's stimulus diffusion. Stimulus diffusion is the spread of an underlying principle even though a characteristic itself fails to diffuse. An example of this has happened very many times in the tech industry. It's where like an actual tech product does not meet consumer standards and does not flourish in the consumer market, but a principle that it brings to the board, a new feature that it brings, actually thrives and is used in many other devices. Now let's start talking about maps. Maps help geographers study the Earth and its features. Maps can represent physical features, peoples, or events in the world. And a map is basically a 2D representation of the Earth or a per portion of the Earth. Cartography is the study of map making, while a cartographer is the map maker. Now, every single map has an innate problem with it, and that is distortion. This is simply because you will always have distortion when you are transferring a sphere onto a rectangle. Properties of maps. Map, some properties of maps, all the properties of maps are shape, which is the geom geometric shapes on the map, size, the area of the land mass that the map portray portrays, distance, and that is the distance between objects on a map, and then direction, accuracy of cardinal directions on a map. And there are three types of direction. Cardinal direction, which is north, south, east, and west. Intermediate direction, which is northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. And then there's relative direction, which is everyday, everyday use direction, such as, oh, this is to the left of that, or this is under this, or above that. And like I said before, some properties will always be distorted. So the cartographer must make a choice based on the information slash statistics that they need to display on which feature they deem is not as important as another. And here there are four projection types. There are equal area maps, which uh, do not distort area. One example of this is Lambert cylindrical equal area projection, and an example of this is below. Uh, there is a conformal slash orthomorphic map projection, which maintains the shape, but does not and but distorts everything else. It is impossible to maintain the same area and size, so you cannot have the equal area and the conformal map together. Below is the Mercator projection shown, which is a very popular map type, but is starting to go out of favor now because it people are uh, protesting it as it shows Europe and North America as more dominant than other countries. Um, projection types, the third one is azimuthal, which uh, maintains correct direction. Uh, there's the equidistance maps, which uh, maintains correct distance. And then finally, there's cognitive maps, which is basically a mental map, and it shows biases of an individual. This can also contain propaganda maps. Um, a map below, which is slightly comical, is a map of a Texans map of the United States, which shows Texas abnormally large and every other state extremely small. And so that's just um, an example of how a, an individual's biases can change their own mental maps. Now let's talk about map scale. Map scale is the distance on a map versus the distance in the real world. There are small scale maps, which represent a large area, and then there's large scale maps, which represent a small area. Another type of scale is scale of inquiry, and that is the area of study, 
whether it be a global area of study, a national area of study, or a local area of study. Reference and thematic maps. Reference maps are used to show common features, such as roads, bridges, and physical features. Thematic maps show you what's going on in a particular location. They generally show one type of statistic. There are five types of thematic maps. There are isoline maps. Isoline maps contain lines that connect points of equal value. There are chloropleth maps, which show patterns in various degrees, and they use and they use colors and shading. There's also proportional symbol maps, which use symbols to represent values, gen generally circles or rectangles, and larger symbols equals a larger value. There's dot density, in which each dot has the same value and are, is used to show frequency, and is a dot per occurrence. And then finally, there's a cartogram, which is land area, in, in which land area is used to represent a specific value. For example, here's an isoline map, and in this map, lines are used to connect areas of the uh, same average temperature. This can also be co considered a chloropath map, as it uses colors to depict various variables. Here is another chloropath map, and this is where it shows the amount of hay, small grain, and harvested acres in a particular area, and it uses different degrees of shading to represent this data. There's a proportional symbol map, and in this map you use uh, different size circles to show different size occurrences of a certain thing, and in this case is a gross domestic product of mining. In this dot density map, we are uh, looking at the farm density of across the United States, and each dot represents 300 farms. Here's a cartogram in which land area is used to represent the population of various countries. Map making technologies. Map making technologies are technologies that are used to construct new and more accurate maps. And generally, these map making technologies are a collection of data. There are two types of data in this case, which are primary data and secondary data. Primary data is data that I, quote unquote, I, or you, or the person who's conducting their experiment, and it's data that they collect. It can be quantitative or qualitative. Secondary data is data collected by someone else. And you generally want to be careful with this data, and you want to compare it with several other, several other sources to make sure that this data is trustworthy. And databases would also be considered as secondary data. Mapping technologies, there's GIS and GPS. GIS is a geographic information system. It is the storage of information to be used by anyone. And the information can be layered in order to compare various types and various variables. GPS, on the other hand, is the global positioning system. It is the exact position on Earth, and it uses the global grid, which is latitude and longitude. It also uses remote sensing, which is a collecting data about Earth from satellites. Now, if we go back to cultural ecology, there are five types of cultural ecology. And like we said before, Cultural ecology is how people in the environment affect each other. The first type is environmental determinism, which is the oldest and is the main cause. The main thing behind that is the environment causes such forces development, and it was used by the Europeans to explain why they were better than the Native Americans when they first started colonizing North America. The second is possibilism. And this is that the environment places some restraints. Humans are resilient and can overcome their environmental restraints, though. But they may not be able to overcome all of their limitations. The next one is cultural determinism. And this states that there are no natural limitations on humans. The only restraints are the ones that you place on yourself or restraints that other humans place on other on, that humans place on other humans. Some self limitations can be religious or economic um, limitations that you place on yourself, and some restraints that other people can place on you are certain, like laws from governments restraining certain races of people and stuff like that. Next is environmental perception, and this is pe how people um, interact with the environment based on their perception of this. 
Some An example of this is countries can see the environment as an area of resources, and they use that area and the resources as are meant for human consumption. And then finally is humans as modifiers. All pe and this is that all people impact the environment in some way, even if it is a lowly developed country or tribe. Now, this is the end of my AP Human Geography review video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, and goodbye.